Hi, this is Dan Martin, and you're watching Freedom, um, as promised. Uh, we heard Thomas Owens reading from Genesis chapter 37, and, and I indicated in the notes uh, that uh, he was reading as part of a project I'd like to do to, to reflect on the life, the story of Joseph, and how the story of Joseph um, is very similar to the story of Jesus, Yahweh, Yeshua, our God, our, our Christ. Amen? Um, and I don't think it's by chance. I, I, I think there's many similarities in the, in the old uh, covenant and the old scriptures, uh, the, or the former covenant rather. Um, having gotten to know my Jewish brothers and sisters better, mostly Messianic ones of course, they, uh, I realized that a lot of them don't like that term the Old Testament because it gives it a connotation that it's, uh, it's expired, <laughs> you know? which makes kind of good sense. I, I uh, because it's 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 not really an expired covenant in the sense that it's very valuable to us today as it as it always has been. Um, but anyway, I won't belay that point. But uh, Thomas was reading from Genesis 37, and I'll just begin there. Uh, Genesis 37, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob, Joseph. Uh, of, I'm sorry. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Just to clarify, uh, there was not a problem with having more than one wife during that time. Um, Joseph, however, was not the, the, the son of the same mothers as his brothers, because Joseph was the son of uh, Rachel, as was Benjamin, who had died at this by this time. So, um... And with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Uh, now Joseph loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was a son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Um, now it doesn't really say what their evil report was. Um, but you know, there no one likes to hear an evil report, and... Usually people don't like to bring even an evil report if you're given a job as a manager or, or um, a supervisor. And it doesn't indicate that Joseph was a manager or supervisor over his brethren, but just the connotation of it is that his father trusted him to give him an honest report of what his brothers were up to. So there was probably already strife at the very beginning. And the very next line tells us that... Um, Jacob loved Joseph more than all his other brothers, um, which uh, seeded envy in their hearts and jealousy. Um, so Joseph came back and he gave his father uh, an evil report, probably that his brothers were screwing around, but we don't know that. But we could tell, um, we could tell as we as we read on that the the brothers probably banded together, and Joseph probably wasn't included much in that as often <laughs> younger brothers and sisters are, are often shunned by the older and you know told to mind their own business and but here you have uh, Jacob uh, showing Joseph some kind of favor um, so it says now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors um, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto them, unto him. So they couldn't speak peaceably unto, unto Joseph. Um, now, a lot of this story is going to try to demonstrate the, the parallels between the life of Joseph, as I said, and the life of Jesus. But I want you to consider also that these are all written for our benefit. We're surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. Um, there's so many stories that uh, in, in the former covenant and the present covenant that we can relate to because they're people. I mean, even Jesus was fully God and fully man, so even, even we relate to Jesus, some of the things he went through as a person, we relate to some of the things that Joseph goes through as a person. And I think as, as we carry on, we'll see that... Um, the same things that happened to Joseph could ha could happen to us, and you know, in 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 the former, I, I don't think it's as prevalent now, but in the former 
uh, prosperity messages that are often preached that you know God wants everybody to be a millionaire, etc., etc., which which I think we're kind of growing out of that phase now in the church, at least to a degree. But I, I think that um, that we'll see that you know sometimes to wait on the promises of God, oh, it takes an awful long time, and and if we don't understand the way He works, and if we don't if we don't understand how he operates and within the time frames that, that he operates in, we can get very frustrated and think that he's abandoned us or forgotten us. But, but you know, it's not in God's nature to forget us or abandon us. And uh, you, you might look at uh, Joseph as being a type of Christ, a, a, a type of a Messiah, like a, a Savior, and he was used for that purpose. And you may look at his father as like the Heavenly Father, and if you think about it, um, a lot of the people during Jesus' time hated him and were jealous of him because of the, the enormous uh, work that, that, that the Father was carrying out through the life of his son Jesus. Um, and so it says they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And it says that the, the Father made uh, Joseph a coat of many colors. Now, there is a little bit of conflict as to translations and whether actually it was a coat of different colors or many colors. Uh, and the interesting thing is that the whole thing that started me on this whole Joseph trip is um, I was in a church one day in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it was kind of like a revival service going on. And certain people would come up for prayer, um, and I, I went up for prayer, and, and you know someone prayed over me. It wasn't significant. They, there wasn't like a huge prophecy prayed over me or anything. But you know I was hungry at that time for a word from the Lord, and even though that person was done praying for me, um, I decided to stay at the altar. And I, I, I kind of adopted the attitude like the parable of the woman and the judge. It's like, Lord, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving this altar until you speak to me. And and that was my attitude, not, not harsh, but in love. I, I just was uh, boldly saying, Lord, I need to hear from you. And... and um, at that time, I felt like the Lord asked me, and I shared this with my friend Beth and, and maybe a couple other key people, but I felt like the Lord asked me, the coat of many colors, what does it represent? Because in my mind's eye, I saw, I, I know this is going to sound strange, but in my mind's eye, I saw these wings come up with these various colors in them. And then I felt like the Lord asked me, um, the coat of many colors that Joseph wore, what does it represent? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I had never really given it, much thought, if any thought. I mean, I've always I've heard the story, and I knew I knew the story, but I never really thought about it too much. And and I thought, I don't know, what does it represent? And I felt like Lord a answered the question to me that He asked, which often He does. He asks us a question, then He gives us the answer. And I felt like He told me that the coat of many colors represented the nations. I began to ponder that and think about that in my heart, and and I thought, you know, that's interesting because um, the coat symbolized various colors and then Joseph went on after all his hardships he eventually was raised up by by Pharaoh and the wisdom that God gave him um, supplied many nations with food otherwise many people probably would have perished um, and so I thought that's very significant now I don't know if that's true or not that's, that's something that I say that I believe the Lord showed to me personally. I'm not trying to say it to take it as doctrine, but it did start me on this journey with Joseph um, that, you know, I, I've been on this study or this journey, whatever you want to call it, for a few years now, and it's never grown stale. As a matter of fact, the more I look into it, the more fascinating it becomes. And I'm not saying that for the purpose that, that uh, someone could look at me and say, oh, you're, you think you're a big shot. It's got nothing to do with me at all. Well, my story probably relates to some degree as, as, as his story did, and I think that is significant and only in the sense that your story does also, and that um, God often gives us the, the, this information through his scriptures so that we'll be prepared to be able to stand up under anything that we could go through. But again, I, I wanted to emphasize that um, if any man on this earth is given any revelation of God, uh, uh, revelation, wisdom, or anything. It's not for the purpose of lifting that man up or trying to create a following for that man, but it's a, it's for the purpose of building up and edifying the whole body of Christ. So that is my purpose with this teaching, is to show anyone that cares to listen that 
that God is, you know, omniscient, omnipresent. For him to write a story uh, that that shows this person's life, Joseph, so closely related to the the, the things that that Messiah, Jesus, would go through, Yeshua, um, is only God can do it. Only God could write that story. So anyway, um, the coat of many colors. In, the, in, in a certain Aramaic version of the scriptures that I looked up, basically calls it a seamless hand-woven robe. So that Aramaic version doesn't really even, and that's by Victor Alexander, 2003. That's his Aramaic translation. Now from the Hebrew, um, the, the indication gives us a, a long sleeve tunic. Um, and then at the very end of the Hebrew translation, which is pakak, I believe for colors, it says, or, or uh, diverse colors, different colors. So pakak, I believe, is uh, um, for many, which would translate to diverse colors, different colors. So, um, but that's not anything to really strain at. Um, but the, the, an interesting thing to look at is in the, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 23, it says, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was, was without seam, woven from the top throughout. And, if, and so these, these robes kind of represent authority. They kind of represent favor. Um, they kind of represent the ordinance of God, in, in a sense, if you'd like to, to see it that way. Um, both robes here uh, se seemingly were completely woven and seamless. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the veil of the temple was also. So that might give you something to think about. Um, so, But it says the brothers hated him and they couldn't speak peaceably to him. Um, have you ever had that happen to you? I know that I have. And I know that, I've, I know that it's happened to me and I know that I've done it. So um, I'm guilty of doing it. And I've also been on the receiving end of that. And it's no fun. It's no fun to to uh, be jealous of someone or envious of someone. And it's it's no fun to have someone be jealous or envious of you. And frankly, it, it doesn't belong in the body of Christ. Um, because if, if my brother or my sister excel in a gift that I don't have... Um, the Lord wants me to focus on what I do have. Now, if you look at these brothers... Um, they weren't starving. Um, Jacob, I believe, loved them very much. But they saw something different in the way that he treated Joseph. Um, in, in a sense, it goes back to the garden. In a sense, it's like, we always want what we can't have. Well, you know, I learned a long time ago. I was in a church one time. And I noticed that there were a lot of people that were really... really uh, uh, vying for the pastor's attention and it, you know it, it, I've never been one that liked the kiss the whole kissing up thing not in the workplace not in the church or anything I believe if you love love God and do a good job and you show respect to your boss you don't have to sweet talk you don't have to do but I saw a lot of this going on in a particular church and of course I won't mention where it was I don't think anybody did it on purpose or anything but it just seemed like a lot of people were vying for the the, the pastor's attention and so I prayed about it and, I, and I'm like, Lord, I don't like that. You know, I, I don't like the competitive thing where, we're, you know, people are trying to fight for a place, you know, or a position. And um, <clears throat> I felt like the Lord spoke to me about that. And I felt like he told me that there's lots of room on his lap, you know. And if you think about that, our, our Heavenly Father um, loves every child uniquely and individually we the scripture says we are fearfully and wonderfully made and oftentimes the problem with envy or jealousy is not because someone has something we don't have or maybe they have more of one thing something that we don't have the 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 problem really is within our own heart it's not what they have or what we don't have it's often that we don't really understand what we have we don't really know what God has given us and so therefore when we see someone that maybe does know what God has given them and they see maybe we see that they know who they are in Christ and or maybe because they've been responsible for a long period of time God has blessed them with a provision that he knows that they're responsible enough to handle maybe we couldn't handle what they have 
at, at this time in our lives. And so it's our own lack that causes us to be envy or jealousy. And it's not even a real lack in a sense because we have all things in Messiah, in Christ. Amen. We, we possess all things that, that, that pertain to, to life and godliness. I, um, and of course, I'm paraphrasing that loosely, but we, we have those things. And, and God distributes them to us according to his time frame when he knows that we can deal with them. And, and don't get me wrong, we're not all supposed to be rich. We're not all, and the scriptures are very clear that, you know, that the, the poor you'll always have among you. Jesus said it. Did, did that mean that he was saying he had a problem with the poor and that they were evil? No. Um, some, some of the poor people that I know are the most rich people you ever want to meet in your life. And, and they don't even desire to have a lot. And so, again, the issue is the heart. You know, if we learn how much God has blessed us, how much he loves us, we won't be like that older, prodigal, that, that older son in the field in the story of the prodigal son. We won't uh, envy when God shows grace upon maybe a, a son that's returning. Um, we'll be glad for that.